Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the EM-1 laser weapon. This is an unusual gun, even in a game full of unusual guns, because it is literally a laser, and I feel that it's very underrated. Even after being buffed, it's a little bit underrated. This is a very strong, very dangerous gun on PC, obviously, but it's also very strong on console. You're going to see me playing exclusively with the EM-1 Poner, because that is by far the best variant, and I'll explain why later on. But first, let's move into the stats of the weapon, and I'll start off with the fact that it has a special and very fast rate of fire. The rate of fire on this gun works a little bit different mathematically than some of the other guns in the game. So when I go over the damage numbers, they're going to look very low, but bear with me, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Anyway, let's take a look at the damage. It will deal between 4 to 6 damage. Uh, that's 4 far away and 6 up close. You can also do 5 damage at medium range, which means it could take between 17 to 25 shots to kill, and shots is in parentheses because it's not technically shooting any bullets. That would make it the lowest damage weapon in any Call of Duty game ever. Like, seriously, that's pretty absurdly low there, but bear in mind it does something unusual with the rate of fire, so the time to kill is not going to be hurt that bad. The other thing you need to know is that it does not deal any extra damage for headshots. You have a 1x headshot multiplier, which means you get no bonus damage, and shooting them in the head doesn't kill them any faster than shooting them in the body, so I never go for headshots, I just go for body shots. The range is actually pretty good on these damage drop-offs. It'll deal its maximum damage and be a 17-shot kill at 26 meters, and it'll still be a 20-shot kill which is five damage all the way out to 38 meters and then drop off to four so that's actually very good that's better than most of the assault rifles and just barely behind the light machine guns now we're going to talk about the rate of fire and that's going to make this seem like a much more viable weapon instead of technically shooting shots it has a pretty much constant hit scan going on and it just scans once per frame uh, if you look at it it'll say that it's rate of fire something like zero but what it's doing is scanning for damage once per frame and you get an effective rate of fire of 3600 RPM, or if you if it's easier, you can think about it shooting one bullet per frame, or pumping out one little bit of damage per frame, and it shoots extremely fast. This is faster than any gun in any Call of Duty game has ever fired, probably twice as fast as anything in any previous game with rapid fire or whatever, which makes the rate of fire very, very absurdly high, and very easily compensates for that damage. Another anomaly with the EM-1 is that variants with plus or minus fire rate do not actually fire faster. They all still just kind of scan at one frame per second, but instead the fire rate indicates, indicates that they will overheat slower or faster. So if you have one with like a lower fire rate, that means it's going to overheat faster, whereas one with a higher fire rate means it's not going to overheat as fast. It's kind of inverse in that area, and I know it sounds crazy, but it's true, bear with me. The fire rates on the variants don't actually change how fast it shoots. It still shoots at 3600 RPM which is just absurdly fast. So perhaps we should take a look at the effective time to kill in this instance. The effective time to kill is 283 milliseconds at most of the ranges you're going to be using the gun, which is close range, which is a little bit slower than most weapons. Most weapons are going to kill around 250 milliseconds, 240 milliseconds, so this one is just a smidgen slower, but because of the very high rate of fire, it's actually going to be very, very forgiving. Basically, if you were to miss one of your three or four shots to kill with another weapon, the time on the follow-up shot is so incredibly high that your time to kill is going to jump up to like, you know, 350 or 340 or just something that's going to take like a huge jump. However, since the EM-1 is scanning once per frame, missing a frame or two is going to affect your time to kill almost none. It's going to have a very, very minimal effect on it, and therefore it is very forgiving and very easy to use, so it might feel a little bit faster because, again, if you miss, the penalty is very, very minimal. When it comes to recoil, this weapon kicks a lot more than you would think any laser should. This is some testing of me firing. I'm firing it without the grip right now, and you can see it drags up very, very harshly. With the grip, it still has some recoil and it still drags and kicks a bit, but it is far, far more manageable. One of the overlooked strengths of this weapon is that it has the best hip fire in the entire game, and I'm not even joking. The hip fire on this is overall going to be more effective than the XMGs, than the shotguns, than the SMGs, than anything, because it is consistently very tight and very easy to use. As a matter of fact, I get most of my kills with this gun with hip fire, and well, probably like two or three times more than I do aiming down sights. Hip fire is absolutely nasty on the EM1, and if I could give you any recommendation in this entire in-depth episode, it would be that you should hip fire as 
as much as possible. If they're within hip fire range, go for it. Far better than aiming down sights. Very, very effective, very tight, and that's really one of the secret strengths. Console players didn't get it as much, but PC players figured it out on day one, and the M1's actually considered overpowered because of how easy it is to hip fire and track people. The iron sights, in my opinion, are good enough. It's kind of one of those like proto dot sights that a lot of the heavy weapons and some of the SMGs have. They're not technically iron sights. It's, it's an optical of some kind, but it's on there. It's free. It's easy to use. Of course, the other sights are better, but you know, for my money's worth, considering how much I'm hip firing and how little I'm aiming down sights, I don't really bother with optical attachments. The amount of time that you get with laser, which we're just going to call laser time in this instance, is four seconds. That means you can hold down the trigger for four entire seconds and spray your laser everywhere and before it overheats. If you use a heat sink, you get a little bit over about 130-ish percent gain on that. It is 5.35 seconds with the heat sink, which is definitely going to be something that you're going to notice. Not so much... Uh, that you will be holding it down for five seconds flat, but more likely that you're going to be less likely to overheat and that you can kind of consistently let it cool off faster and spray it. Anyway, I don't use the heat sink very much. I don't find it to be useful, but we'll talk about that later on. The overheat cooldown, should you go ahead and overheat it to the maximum, is very slow at 3.5 seconds. This is on the slower end of things for energy weapons, and it will most definitely get you killed. I... I would highly, highly caution you against overheating this weapon, no matter how greedy you are for the kills. It is always 100% better to just stop firing for a split second, let it cool down just a little bit, and then go ahead and spray instead of just going for the full-on overheat. I'd highly recommend avoiding that. Like all of the other heavy weapons, it has a very slow raise and drop time. Not even going to bother measuring these because let's get serious here. If you're rocking a heavy weapon, you know that you cannot raise or drop, like put this weapon or pull it away or anything very quickly. It's just going to be super slow like all of the SMGs, I mean LMGs, and you're probably not going to be wanting to use a pistol or backup weapon because it'll take forever to draw. The run speed is 80%, putting it in the category of the slowest moving weapons in the game, like the rest of the heavy weapons. You will definitely notice this, and you will definitely feel very slow while lugging this thing around in Advanced Warfare. The best two variants that you can get in this entire game for the EM-1 are the Poner and the Lel. These are the only two that have damage. The Poner has plus two damage, and the Lel has plus one damage. Both of these will increase your time to kill, making them much more effective. And as we discussed earlier, the uh, plus and minuses and fire rates, which you'll find on some of these variants, don't actually change the fire rate, but just the overheat time. And since I don't really have problems overheating, even though I've got negative accuracy on both of these, I would trade off that overheat for the damage. Now they do affect the mobility and the accuracy and those sort of things, but I never found those to be as beneficial because I don't need the accuracy since I'm hip firing all the time and I don't need the mobility, which is ADS, because I'm hip-firing all the time, and you just want to go with one of these two. Either one of these two, the Poner is better because it has more damage, but the Lel is also okay. These just these decrease your time to kill, which is very, very important. My overall opinion of this weapon is that it is much stronger than people give it credit for. The EM-1 is a nasty, downright dirty gun that most people don't think about using. It was actually good enough to be banned in MLG slash competitive Call of Duty for fear that they could abuse the hip fire mechanics, and if you use it well in public matches, it can be extremely, extremely dangerous. I think that it's best used at close and long ranges and not so much at medium range. At close range, it's very easy to hip fire. A lot of guns that they'll have to aim down sights and aim properly and shoot you you can just kind of hip fire them especially if you're running in with gung-ho it's very easy to just hose them down at long ranges the accuracy and relative ease of use will outclass most of the assault rifles not the sniper rifles or some of the other guns but you'll find that it works pretty well at long ranges too however medium range is where you get smacked medium range most of the assault rifles are going to outperform you in time to kill they're going to be easier to handle easier to track targets higher mobility medium range is really what you want to avoid with this gun of course it can be used there but it's not ideal deal and it's the only weapon in the game that can really what I would do call suppress enemies I'm thinking kind of like battlefield mechanics you know when somebody misses you with a sniper rifle round you get suppressed and your screen gets all blurry you can't do that in Call of Duty but you can do something similar the sustained fire on this weapon is crazy and people can see it they don't like getting hit by the laser it's bright it's annoying and even if you're not getting kills you can kind of push and goad enemies away and rack up assists and clean up kills and just be really really annoying and close off choke points and actually suppress enemies and it is very very beneficial at doing that my recommended class we're going to do a little bit differently here today i'm just going to show you a screenshot of it i like to run the em1 poner exclusively i run it with this with the uh, foregrip so that when i do aim down sights it's much easier to handle i run it with the stock 
so that when I aim down sights, I can sidestep really fast. That It's really not like the greatest ADS gun, I don't think, but these two make it much better at ADS. The rest of it's going to be all hip fire, and I'm a little bit perk heavy. I like lightweight and flak jackets so that I don't run sl sl so that I run fast, so that I don't get blown up. Gung ho so that I can shoot this while sprinting. This is an excellent gung ho weapon. I don't recommend gung ho on a lot of guns, but it works really well in the M1 and the standard toughness and blast suppressor. You can see that I'm also running overclock and you know a regular grenade down there. But that's my class. This class works great for me, and I would highly recommend it for anybody playing this game. Well, guys, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on the AE-4 energy weapon, and the next one's going to be on the Pytake, Pytake, I cannot pronounce this gun, the, the crazy zero-recoil LMG. Drifter out.